Shalom, shalom. Hero Israel. This is Romans chapter 4. Give my honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. This book of Romans chapter 4 and verse 1. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to give you a brief summary on what Paul was going into in in this in chapter four, so we can get the proper understanding. So, like we read in the previous chapters, um, chapter one, Paul is speaking on the different mode of living of the lifestyles in the Jews and the Gentiles, which are Israelite foreigners, and how the Jews Practicing Jews and Gentiles, Slakia, Israelite foreigners, have essentially gone off and despised the truth. So this is just give you a uh, brief summary of the previous chapters that we've um, gone over. So the Jews, by their, essentially their unrighteous execution of the law and despising their foreign counterparts, which are the Gentiles, and because they became vain in their dispensation of the law and the Gentiles in leaving their former covenant. So they have both gone off, um, especially the Gentiles, in, in leaving their uh, former covenant and customs and following the ways of the Greeks, the Romans, from the times of the Seleucid Empire, which is... 137 BC up until the times of Yahweh Shai and on down. So this is a little over a hundred years have passed since the time of Antiochus IV and the persecution of the Jews and their controlled assimilation to these Greek Roman um, societies. So the first chapter was just touching on the different lifestyles of these two groups. So as you can see, throughout all the epistles, Paul is writing two different, two different state of minds, which are the state of mind of the Jew and the state of mind of the Gentile. Now, chapter 2, mainly here Paul is speaking to the Jews and setting the example to the Gentiles, particularly because the Jews had knowledge of the laws and customs and how itself through the laws of sacrifice um, they had uh, essentially given a way for these Jews to repent you know the Most High when he commanded the law through Moses and also was to, uh, to, to cover sins so you know the Jews they you know, although they had been given that, that mercy, that grace, they had denied that same grace, mercy given to them by the Most High. And making these sacrifices to, to atone for, to not atone for sins, like it, but just to cover the sins. So, um, they despised their Gentile counterparts. Also, Paul, you know, towards the end of that chapter is going into how Jew or Gentile working uh, the righteousness which is of the, of the law justification in the eyes of the Most High what he was touching on is that these things have to start inwardly and you manifest them through your works and your actions now chapter 3 is going into Essentially, Paul is pointing out to the Gentiles, to the Israelite foreigners, how the law is profitable uh, for them to use, mainly, you know, because through the law and the prophets, you get a understanding, and you were, um, Paul was attempting to establish these Gentiles, which had the belief in Yahweh Shai, coming into the, back into the fold, you know, in the law and in the prophets, they have the you know, the the prophecies concerning Yahweh Shai 
and how he 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 was to come on the scene in the time of the um, time of the Romans. So, because Moses, he was that first mediator, and pursuant to Deuteronomy chapter eighteen, Yahweh was that next prophet to come up to to command the um, the nation of Israel on the what was commanded um, through the Most High for for them to follow. So. You know, some of the Jews, you know, they they did not believe that the Gentiles could return to their covenant, you know, because according to um, certain stipulations of the law, for example, you know, keeping the Passover every year, you know, being cut off if you don't keep it, you know, things of that sort, you know, you, you know, they despise their these 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 strangers, you know. Because they hadn't been keeping the commandments, keeping the laws, the feast days, so on and so forth. But, you know, these Jews were, they were, they were hypocrites because throughout the, even in Deuteronomy and the law, you know, the Most High commanded, you know, the nation to, to return to their covenants. Because even Moses prophesied of the Israelites going off. Um, right before he, he appointed Joshua. So even if you go into the prophets, you know, just briefly, Zechariah 1 and 3, Malachi 3 and 7, Jeremiah 4 and 1, Most High commands Israel to return. He says continuously over and over, return unto me. So, essentially, um, you know, I'll you know, Paul, this is what he was doing. He was pointing the Israelite foreigners, the Gentiles, to these types of scriptures. In very few words. And essentially telling them that, you know, they're just justified in first their belief. But not only are they justified through that, but through the, the in these type of prophecies, you know, commanding the, the children to return to their covenant. You know, although some Jews did not believe that that could happen. So, also, in this chapter of the, um, and throughout the epistles, Paul, you know, he, he gets on the Jews, mainly those, he gets on the, those of the ruling class, you know, they despise those, you know, the, the general population of the Jews, they became worshippers of men. You know, started make adding their own ordinances. You know, uh, things you know to make them seem righteous to keep their their their, their positions in the um, in the synagogues and that things of that sort. You know, they were so they were practicing and promoting hypocrisy. You know, so Paul closing up in this chapter. You know, he shows the Jews that they have been, you know. No better than Gentiles in their own judgments, and you know both them and the Gentiles have gone off. Mainly, you know, like I said before, the Gentiles in leaving their former covenants. Also, so again, you know, Paul, you know, shows the Jews how their Gentile counterparts are also under the law throughout this chapter. You know, and the law. You know, the end of the law we know is obedience, but it also commands repentance. You know, and it's, and you know, because even the the Jews practicing Jews, you know, they were able to repent. You know, through animal sacrifice. You know, but that, you know, you know, um, they denied that same you know mercy to their. Um, foreign counterparts, you know, the Gentiles, you know, and it shows that, you know, you know, the law, you know, it shows you, you know, you know, it shows you where you go off, 
you know, so these Gentiles needed to have this type of knowledge of the law to show them, you know, what what sin is, you know, what 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 is a transgression, you know, and Yahweh Shai, which was prophesied to be, you know, that prophet, you know, he was prophet prophesied to Moses, you know, you know that was that that also that latter grace that was given to the nation. You know, so these Gentiles, they were included in it. You know, so, you know, Yahweh Shai, you know, he's at, you know, living sacrifice, you know, and for the atonement of sins for the whole nation, Jews and Gentiles. So that was the whole purpose of Moses, you know, prophesying Yahweh Shai, him coming on the scene, you know, being a testimony, you know, testifying against the Jews, you know, because they weren't, you know, executing things in the law correctly, you know, and that's also a, a, you know, a, a cut to you people who think that he did away with the law, because if he did away with the law, why was he teaching throughout the whole, throughout his whole ministry on how to, how to rightfully execute the law and keep the law? So, you know, Again, you know, Yahweh Shai, he was at sacrifice for, for sins because, you know, there would come a time when the temple would be destroyed, you know, and Yahweh Shai, you know, he prophesied of that destruction coming to Jerusalem. So there would be no temple to offer, to offer sacrifice in its due time. So, you know, it's a lot here, you know. And also in this chapter, you know, towards the end, Paul is introducing the law of faith, which is the concept like us, like I touched on, you know, towards the beginning of this review, that you know, the 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 belief came before anything. You know, the Jew believed, you know, in the law, and then they practiced the law. So you know, the law of faith, you know, that's the concept to, you know believe through the inward man, you know, like the concept introduced towards the end of chapter 2, you know, to allow these Gentiles, you know, um, to, to, you know, believe inwardly and manifest through your works, through the works of the law, Be because we know in, in Romans 3 and 2, you know, he's, he's pointing you know, these, these Israelite foreigners to the Torah. So, you know, these were, this was for the Gentiles coming back into the fold. You know, so, you know, the law of faith, you know, gave, you know, first off, they were just justified by believing, you know, in Yahweh Shai, you know, and then they were, you know, commanded to keep the law, you know, so they can, um, through their inward, you know, um, inward person, then manifest their works, their faith through their works, you know, which is the justification, which is, which is of the law. Now here in chapter four, you know, Paul introduces the law, the, the touches on what the law of faith is, you know, he gives a, he gives two examples. One of the main examples is, you know, Abraham believing, then being justified through what what he did as far as his works, you know. Um, you know, he was justified first in his belief, and then you know he left he left his his the land of his people. You know, then you know um, he went to a foreign land to Canaan. You know, and he. He basically almost he almost offered offered his only son, you know. So these these were the things that justified him through through first believing and then um, through his works, you know, showing his faith through his works, and that's that law of faith that that Paul is speaking on. This is why he talks about these things in chapter four. So. Um, 
So this is how he, he pleased the Most High, you know, when he was given, you know, um, the, the covenant, you know, the circumcision. He was promised the land of, of, uh, of Canaan, although he never actually, you know, the Israelites were the ones as a nation. They were actually in, uh, divided the land through Joshua, but, you know, he believed that this these things would happen to him and the seed after him. So, you know, just like, you know, the those Israelites that came out of Egypt, you know, they were they had that belief. So this is this is what Paul's using as an example. And all these things were written as a pattern of things to come. So with that said, you know, let's let's get right into it. Um, this book of Romans, chapter four, and verse one. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? You know, so verse one, you know, this is touching on how some of the Jews at the time, you know, the these. Um, practicing Jews have been approaching these these Gentiles, you know, as they were coming back into the fold, you know, going around, you know, essentially pressuring them, you know, because they, they believed in Yahweh Shai, you know, and there was there were some Jews who believed, you know, some Jews who didn't believe, you know, that Yahweh Shai was uh, Hamashiach. So, you know, they insisted these Israelite foreigners, you know, that they had to circumcise themselves. Like, like that was the, the first thing that was, uh, because it was commanded to Abraham before the law. And they were so carnal that they, they didn't, they didn't think that they were justified in their faith, first and foremost, like Abraham was before he was given that, that covenant of circumcision. So also, you know, these Jews, they wanted to claim them as your as their proselytes, you know, so let's go. We're going to look at the definition for proselyte and then we'll go to, and then we'll go to Galatians 6 and 13. So let's take a look at it. <clears throat> let's see. Proselyte. Um. A person who has converted from one opinion, religion, or party to another. A Gentile who has converted to Judaism. But we know there's no such thing as the word Judaism in the Bible. That's a man-made uh, doctrine. That's an invention. And we know that's a combination of, of, of the, um, goes back to, you know, the tribe of Judah or Judas, which is a Greek transliteration of Judah. Um, so, proselyte, uh, from the Greek approach, proseluth, Greek, proseluthos, stranger, convert. You know, so these Jews were coming going to the, uh, coming up to the, coming to the strangers, you know, to these Israelite foreigners, Gentiles, and insistence, Lakia, that they circumcise themselves so they can claim, claim them as their, um, I wouldn't say convert because you can't convert to a nationality, but, um, claim them as their, as their proselytes, you know, as their, you know, conforming their, um, their opinion, you know, to the opinion that they had of, you know, following the, the ways of the Greeks and the Romans back to their, um, to their ways of, of, uh, living in their former covenants, you know, so let's go to, uh, book of Galatians chapter six and verse 13. Book of Galatians, chapter 6, and verse 13. For neither are they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circ circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. You know, so Paul was talking to, to the Galatians, 
in this part of the epistle, you know, telling them that they just, you know, they intend to, to, to get you to circumcise yourself just for the reason that I mentioned um, earlier. Because, you know, they, they knew that Abraham received that, that covenant before the law, but, you know, these men were, um, were being carnal, you know, instead of teaching them the main, the principles that Paul was touching on in this chapter, you know, they just wanted to claim them as their, as their followers or, you know, saying, oh, look, you know, I changed this guy's opinion, you know, or I made this guy, this, this person repent. So this is what these Jews were doing to the Gentiles, you know, at that time, just so they can, you know, claim that they did it, that they, you know, brought them back to their, because to repent, if you look in the Greek, that just means to, to change one's mind. So we'll touch, touch that on another video, but, you know, these, these, um, this is what these men were doing. And Paul, you know, he wrote these things, you know. To let them know that, you know, they just want to, you know, claim you as, as, you know, and justify themselves and your actions pertaining to the law. When they didn't, they didn't give the, they weren't giving these Gentiles the principles, the main principles of why you should, why, why circumcision came into play. Like Paul is doing in chapter, in this, in this chapter, Romans chapter four. So, you know, these were men who trusted in the law and justified themselves in the law, you know, but denied the, the principles that the law taught, which was faith, belief, manifesting it through your works. So that's the law of faith, you know, because like I said, you know, some of these Jews, they, did, they denied, you know, the repentance that the law gave them to these Israelite foreigners, you know. Saying, oh, because you haven't kept the, the feast days, you know, you know, you're banned from the, from the covenant. Or they, 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 they didn't, you know, let them, let them return because of that. This is why, how was I say in Matthew chapter 22, I believe that, um, these men, you know, um, they, they, they closed the, the kingdom to they denied you know the the kingdom of heaven to the, to these to these men actually let's go into that let's see so like Twenty-three, Matthew twenty-three. So, so uh, I believe it's towards the end. Book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23. Um, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tith, tith and mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. You know, so these were carnal men. You know, they were just, you know, Essentially, trying to you know force these these Israelite foreigners to you know to just circumcise themselves, you know, without teaching them you know the right way, you know to to return to the to the to the covenant and to the laws. So, you know, like I said, some of these Jews they denied Yahweh Shai, you know, they didn't believe he was the Messiah when he came on the scene.
you know, so, you know, these were, these were carnal men, like I said, but again, you know, there was Jews that did believe, you know, um, like it, like it says in the book of Acts, you know, you know, and they, they had commanded these Israelite foreigners, you know, they had to keep the law, and this is after Yahweh Shai, so, you know, again, that's, this is one of the other, you know, cuts to, you know, the law was done away with. And let's get to that precept, the book of, the book of Acts, chapter 15, and verse 5. Book of Acts, chapter 15, and verse 5. Um, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. You know, so this is a, a sect of the Pharisees, you know, so, you know, they believed, you know, um, so they went up and, and also, um, you know, um, the elders and the, the apostles and the elders, you know, they had, uh, um, they had disputed with them, you know, you know, Paul and Barnabas, you know, they all gathered together, you know, to, to, um, to see what was more, um, what was, what was more necessary for them to do, you know, so th these are the things that Paul talked about in the epistles too. You know, this is what he, why he taught the principles, you know, of the law and slowly, you know, quoted, uh, you know, the prophets, you know, try, try to get these Israelite foreigners, you know, back into the, into, into the fold, you know, because they had the, the, the first principle was that faith. So, you know, um. So this was what, again what Paul was saying, you know. So let's go back to um, Book of Romans, chapter four. Book of Romans, chapter four, and verse two. Um, so actually, let's go back to uh, verse one. You know, so this is what. When it says, you know, um, pertaining to the flesh, you know, this is, this is, you know, that context that it's talking about, you know, because, you know, there's other terms that, you know, um, precepts where the flesh is mentioned, but it's not all in the, in the same type of context. In this context, it's, it's referencing, you know, something like, like what, like I mentioned in Galatians 6 and 13. You know, carnal works. This is what this is the context that it's talking about. So Paul is saying, you know, you know, um, what carnally, you know, would did Abraham do? You know, um, what 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 was first? You know. So let's read verse two. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had were off to glory, but not before God. You know, so here Paul is making it clear that, you know, that's that wording that he's using. The, the flesh in itself here, you know, it's, it's so-called, you know, being justified by your works alone. So let's go to verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You know, so um, Paul's making it clear you know, that according to the scriptures, Abraham, you know, like I mentioned, you know, that faith was, he was justified in his faith before anything else. And that was counted to him as just the justification or righteousness. You know, this is why I have to know these words. Because he believed, you know, um, what the Most High commanded him. You know, to leave his kindred, go into a strange land, you know, dwell with his family there, you know being compassed, you know, by these, these strange people, you know, the Canaanites, the other nations, you know, this is, this is when yet, um, when it was just one man and his cattle and his slaves, 
this was before a nation was was created you know this is why he was called you know abraham he was given that name because he would be the father of of um, many nations but like i said you know he he departed from the land of his people you know and he believed what the most high told him and gradually you know manifested his works through 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 his faith and that's what paul is teaching on on the law of faith so let's go to the first precept of the book of hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8 book of hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8 and it reads by faith abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after received for an for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went verse 9 by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with isaac and jacob the heirs with him of the same promise you know so we know he didn't he didn't he wasn't there physically with isaac and jacob at the same time but this, these were um throughout the generations you know they 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 dwell in the same place you know so um this is this is why you know paul is speaking on you know the abraham's faith you know first and foremost and not his works he's not highlighting the works he's highlighting the faith in this chapter so this book of uh, let's go to the account, book of Genesis, chapter fifteen, and verse six. Or actually, we'll start. Let's see. We'll start at verse one. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Verse 7, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the ur of Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. You know, Mesopotamia came out of the, the land of his fathers. You know, this is where where Jacob returned. You know, to to find the wife of his of the uh, of his of his people for himself. Salakia, Isaac, Isaac. You know, so um, um, Jake, Jacob actually, Salakia. Bugging. Um. So, you know, Abraham obeyed the Most High. You know, called him out of the land of his people. You know, and he didn't know, you know, what was going to happen, but he believed. You know, and that was justification alone. You know, his belief that the Most High would would you know be his, like I said in verse one, you know, his shield and his great reward. You know, so, um, so, and afterward, you know, he, after that belief, you know, he received the commandment of circumcision. So, you know, um, um, let's get the account. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. You know, so this covenant was commanded to throughout his generations, you know. And this is what um Paul was touching on. He this is why um in and well, I'll bring out that precept in Romans 4, but this is why he brought um, this account, you know, because all these things were a, a pattern of things to come, 
and it was commanded to the seed and after after um, the generations of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is why Paul is saying, you know, that these Israelite foreigners they're justified also in that. You know, because they have that the faith. This is why he said, let me get that account in Romans chapter four. I believe it's um thirteen. In the book of Romans chapter four and thirteen, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world, which is the world the Israelites, was not to Abraham. Or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So Paul is saying, you know, essentially to the Jews and Gentiles, look, you know, you have to look all the way back and see in the beginning, you know, what what came first. God had a chosen, Most High had a chosen seed. God then promised, you know, you know, um, through this faith, through the same faith, you know, that the forefathers had, back to the from the beginning. To Abraham, you know. This is why um, Paul spoke that the and he and he and he was essentially saying, you know, these Gentiles are justified because they have that faith, the same faith of our father Abraham. You know, so um, I'm gonna see if I can bring it up where. Um, This book of Romans, chapter 4, and verse 16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all this seed. You know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's the whole seed up until to Jacob. And that's Israel. And all these things were written. Why? Because, you know, like I said in, in the end of Deuteronomy, you know, Moses said that, you know, after I pass, you know, you, you're going to go off, you're going to serve idols, you're going to be scattered on all nations. And that's in the Torah, and that's a testimony against these, these Jews who denied, you know, the, their, their, um, these, is, these Israelite foreigners, you know, these Gentiles, you know, um, they did, he they denied him essentially that that salvation. You know this is why um, Yahweh Shai, you know, as a testimony to the Jews, you know, this is why he told some of the Jews, you know, you deny the, the kingdom of God to 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 these people. Let's see if I can get that precept real quick. I believe it's in the book of Luke. Salak, you just bear with me. It's uh, for 49. Book of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 52. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye enter not in yourselves, because they were in their, in their vain, in vain traditions, and them that were come entering in. Ye hindered, you know, so they were hindering these Israelite foreigners, you know, by only commanding them through the carnal works, but, you know, not giving them the principles, you know, which is, you know, having faith, you know, believing, you know, and then making it manifest, you know, and be justified through the law, through your righteous works. So let's go back to, um, Romans chapter 4 and it reads verse 3 for what saith the scripture Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness so he was justified in that belief that's what this is what Paul is touching on in this chapter 
Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So Paul, you know, here he's making the point that, you know, you know, like the similitude of essentially Abraham believing first, you know, then showing his faith, you know, through the through his righteous works. You know, and then afterward receiving the commandment, you know, to circumcise his seed and the seed after him, you know, then he was indebted to keep that covenant, you know, because you have to keep it throughout the whole generations up until now, you know, those, those who have the means to do it, you know, you know, Israel, the, the Israelites coming back into the fold now, you know, you, 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 you should get circumcised because it's, it's. This is what Paul is, is, touch, is touching on to these Israelite foreigners. This is why he brought up the circumcision of Abraham and his seed. Because it's saying this is necessary and you're indebted to do it. Just like the Israelites were given the, the commandments, the law. You know, we're indebted the same way Abraham through his faith. And then through his works, then him giving, you know, that covenant of circumcision, the commandment of circumcision, it's, it's, we're, we're the same way, you know, we're commanded to believe and then keep the law and show our belief through the execution, through the righteous works of the law. You know, just like the, um, the Sabbath being a, a sign between us and the Most High. We have to keep the Sabbath as a sign, as a sign of the covenant. You know, so all these things are, are a pattern of, of, of things to come, you know, and they all go hand in hand for the whole nation. You know, so, um, You know, all these things, you know, are a pattern of things to come. And we have to know these things. Right? So let's move on to um, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So now this may be a hard verse to, to kind of, you know... For us to try to understand because, you know, this epistle was written in the Greek. So it's not the same as us reading it as, as it was written in the manuscript. So we have to look at the manuscript. We have to look at the translations. This is why it's imperative, you know, to know etymologies. You have to study, you know, the study of words. You know? So, um, let's look at the, at the several translations and analyze them. Uh, verse 5. Salakia, bear with me. So, this is from the uh, New Living Translation. It reads, but people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. You know, so this gives you a little, a little more understanding. You know, um, so Paul's point here is that, you know, the law even justifies these Israelite Gentiles, these, these strange, these Israelite, um, foreigners, these strangers to the covenant, you know, they were, who were coming back into the fold because even the law teaches that Israel would go off, leave their covenants, you know, and ultimately, you know, were commanded to return, pursuant to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27 and on down. Well, let's go to that precept, but my main point here is that, you know, Paul uses a heavy word here in this in this verse. You know, he he uses the word um which is 
Acebus, you know, which is, he essentially, definition is ungodly, impious. Impious is, is, is an ungodly person, you know, or what you would call in modern times, say, an, an atheist, or one that doesn't have a, a belief. You know, they're just out, they're just out there, you know, following, you know, any kind of way. Going this way, going that way, you know. Um, and this is what, you know, Paul uses such a heavy word because this this is how the Jews viewed the Gentiles, you know. They viewed, they viewed them as ungodly men, sinners, you know. Like like they were saying to Yahweh Shai, you know, you sit and you eat with the publicans and the sinners, these ungodly men. So, you know, Paul uses this with this word because, you know, um, in this verse, he was mainly speaking to the Jews, you know, who viewed these, these, these Israelite foreigners as ungodly, um, people. And why do they view them like that? Because, you know, if you look into the, um, the usage of it, you know, um, and the, uh, the, the word study, it says, um, from Asibis, Asibis, an adjective which is the negation of to respect properly, lack of reverence, you know, without due respect, you know, failing to honor what is sacred, for example, especially out, outwardly in the ceremonial sense, or respecting what is holy. So, you know, they viewed these Israelite foreigners, you know, as, as, you know, failing lack of reverence to the Most High, to the covenant, to the law, to the precepts, to the scriptures, to the things that the, that the forefathers were commanded to do, you know, throughout the generations. You know, so this is what this verse is talking about. It's not saying, you know, you can't read it. And make a whole doctrine out of this out of this verse either. You know, like they say in in so called religion, you know, that oh this is talking about everybody, but you have to have the the original understanding, which is Paul, you know, speaking to the Jews using the same mindset that they had. Well he was a Jew too, so that was he was once in that mindset too. You have to remember that. He's a, he's a son of a Pharisee. So, you know, um, yeah, mainly men of the ruling class, you know, that they denied this type of um, compassion to these Israelite foreigners. And they viewed them as ungodly men, outcasts, strangers. You know, um, so this is why he used the word ungodly here, you know, as a uh, personification. You know, and also as a way for, he was sticking up for the Israelite foreigners, you know, that's why he wrote, you know, um, God justifies even these men, essentially, that you're calling ungodly. Because they're of that same, not just because they're of the same lineage, but, you know, they have that faith that before the, these commandments and, and, and statues and customs came into play, you know, through through Abraham, you know, he believed before anything else. So he's saying that these, to the Jews, that these Gentiles, these Israelite foreigners, they, they have that belief. So, you know, you can't, you can't deny them, you know, the rest, rest of the, of the, of the process. Because they believe. They're, they're believers. They're believers of the, um, of, of, um, you know, these the same things that that, that 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 you believe. You know, so um so let's go to um Deuteronomy chapter four twenty seven. So um these are the people that Paul was talking about, these Israelite foreigners, and he was speaking in this verse mainly to the Jews. So let's read it again. But people the Gentiles are counted as righteous, not because of their work, the works of the law, the works of the law, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. 
where he justifies those those that are that, that are considered ungodly or or like we read in the concordance um impious you know without due respect you know um without res those without respect to what is holy so um that's what it's talking about so let's go to um Deuteronomy 4 and 27. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 27. And it reads, And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you, and there you shall serve gods the work of men's hands, wood and stone which neither see nor hear, nor eat nor smell. Um, verse 28, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, which is... The law, the prophets, you know, what, what Yahweh Shai was, was commanded, you know, because he was sent by the Most High too. You know, Yahweh Shai, you know, he said, um, th those who deny the Son deny him that sent um, him, that sent him, the Father that sent him. I believe that's in the book of John. Um, so, you know, um, Yahweh Shai, he was a, a mouthpiece too. And he is he is the mouthpiece of the Most High. All these things are done through the Most High. You know, verse 31. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. So not only were the Jews bound by this covenant, so were the uh, Israelite foreigners. So this is the point that Paul was trying to make. You know, to the Jews and the Gentiles. You know, this is why he, you know, um, to him was was committed the this the ministry to the Gentiles. You know, because he was attempting to bridge that gap. You know, so um, so again, the Jews. You know. Um, they they claim to keep the law carnally, but they despise their own their own people, mainly the 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 um Israelite strangers, the foreigners, the Gentiles. You know they most likely kept all the ceremonial laws, you know, like the ceremonial cleansing, animal sacrifice. But you know they offended in in allowing these these Gentiles, which are of the same nation, to come back into the fold. You know they denied verses like these in 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 Deuteronomy chapter four. And I believe it's in chapter 30 also. You know, even pursuant to Leviticus 19 and 18, you know, which you shouldn't bear the grudge against the children of your people. But these Jews were so, you know, caught up in their traditions, you know, claiming to be above, above other, um, above their own, you know, despising their own people. You know, they claimed to be, you know, they were stuck up. You know, so, you know, they despise their own people. So not only, you know, was he proving, you know, these Jews liars and hypocrites in very few words. And, and not just this epistle, but in the other epistles. You know, um, and this is why the Jews, they, um, they persecuted him and they they basically wanted to kill him because they they despised what he was saying, what he stood up for. So his point was to show that here, although Gentiles went off, you know, they're also justified, you know, in in returning to their covenant. You know, like um and what I'm speaking on is uh is right here in verse five. 
So this is how they were justified, you know, because in, in, in Deuteronomy and many other precepts, you know, they were commanded to return. And Yahweh Shai, you know, that's why he was sent to the Jews first, because, you know, he was he was sent to to tell them, to show them, you know, where they were going off and how they were being carnal. You know, they weren't going from the inward man, you know, from the heart, which is hard as your mind. You know, like I, like I went over in the other videos, you know, um, these were, um, you know, they, they, they were, they were, um, hypocrites, you know, so Yahweh Shai, that's, that was his ministry. That's why he was sent to the Jews, not just to confirm the covenant with them and the forefathers, but also to. To be as a, as a testimony against them, you know. So let's get that real quick. So you got a piece, you know, the New Testament. You have to piece it together, you know. You can't just take what somebody has 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 um try to indoctrinate you with, and then just take their word for it. You have to. This why you have to study it for yourself. Slack is bear with me. Let's see. This book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 8. Now I say that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. You know, so um so, you know, that was what Yahweh was sent for, you know, to not only testify against the Jews, show them where they're going off, proph prophesy destruction, you know, but also confirm the promises, salvation to all Israel. And he also, you know, came for the lost sheep and all things are done through him. So, you know, this is why he appeared to Paul. You know, this is why Paul was given that, you know, that charge, you know, to not only uh, go to the Gentiles, but, you know, um, also he was sort of bridging the gap in these epistles. You know, what he was doing, he was bringing these churches together, these two, these two types of people together. This is why he wrote to two types of people. So um, let's go back to Romans verse 4. This is the book of Romans chapter 4 and verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed, imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Come, verse 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for, for righteousness. So the point Paul is proving here is that, you know, that the, there are faithful men, you know, in the, in the in Gentiles. You too, you know, there's righteous Gentiles, although they're not keeping the the works of the law, you know, they have faith. You know, they 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 um um you know consciously, you know, um God made made you know these these Gentiles less susceptible to sin. You know because you know there there had been some Gentiles who had who had been doing the works of the law, like it says in Romans two and fourteen, without formally be being taught the precepts. Let's go to that. So this is what Paul is touching on. You know, it's the book of Romans chapter two and verse fourteen. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. 
which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So what, what is saying here, and it's comparing to um, what David said, is that, you know, inwardly, you know, these men, you know, were keeping some of the things commanded, you know, like, you know, um, not committing adultery. Even now, you know, there's some some Israelites who don't know the um, black, so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, you know, they don't know the Israelites, but they're keeping, you know, their conscience and the most high, you know, giving, giving them that spirit, you know, that righteous spirit that, that the, that the uh, chosen seed have, you know, their conscience is bearing witness with their works, you know, like not committing adultery, you know, um, respecting your mother, your father, you know, things of that sort, not stealing, you know, just basic, basic things. So this is what David was speaking on. And Paul is using that as a point to say, you know, you know, some some of these, you know, Israelite foreigners, you know, they have that same um, inward inward conscience and outer works, you know, as as what David is, is speaking on, you know. So verse 9, he's saying, you know, does this come upon those who are only practicing Jews or do the Israelite foreigners, you know, consciously, you know, you know, they're doing some of these things without being, you know, formally taught. You know, this is the main point is that that faith comes before anything. That's 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 how faith, you know. Abraham was justified in his faith before anything. And this is what it, it speaks on in verse 9. But the main point is that faith that, that Abraham had, you know, before giving the commandment to circumcise his seed. So let's go to verse 10 and 11. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. So the faith, you know, Abraham, Abraham had it, you know, before he circumcised himself and his household. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You know, so... um. The seal of righteousness, Paul is comparing the commandment of circumcision, you know, and that faith. This is why he spoke in the end of chapter 3 about the law of faith. Why? Because, you know, um, that faith, you know, in, in, you know, in keeping the covenant, you know, through that, um, the seal of righteousness, of that faith is what is executing the law is keeping the law but you have to have that faith that's why he spoke of the law of faith because these things go hand in hand so um and he's saying you know um that he might be the father of all them that believe though they be not circumcised that righteousness might be imputed all to them also because Paul is saying, you know, that these these people that you, that you call Gentiles or ungodly men, you know, um, you know, what happened with Abraham, you know, and he was given that that uh, you know that example that Abraham did, you know, which he believed, and then, you know, he did it through his works. Paul is comparing this to the Israelites that the Israelite foreigners that believe are coming into the fold, you know, and manifesting it through the law, through their works. And they're justified in that, but first in their faith. So this is why I'm saying the father of all them that believe, because they are all of this of that seed, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
although they're not circumcised. He, he, Paul is actually, you know, he's referencing Abraham, but he's talking about these Israelite foreigners because they were coming back to the covenants. They, they, were, they weren't, you know, aware of that circumcision, commandment of circumcision. You know, but righteousness, you know, they're still justified to them also because just like Abraham had faith, you know, Paul is saying these Israelite foreigners are justified in their faith alone. And then returning to what was commanded, like, we, like we're doing now, rehearsing the righteous acts, keeping the feast days, you know, um, learning the precepts, you know, keeping the commandments. That's that seal of righteousness that even up until now is being practiced. You know, and how we do that, we do that through faith. Then we, we, we have faith that we're going to keep the commandments and we, we, we learn the precepts and then we keep and we, we, we execute them through our works. But it all starts with the inside, with your heart, which is your mind. So again, all these things go, all these things, all these things go together. So let's go to um, verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, which are the Jews, but also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet be, being yet uncircumcised. So now this is Paul speaking to the Jews about the Gentiles, you know, that they're, they're slowly coming back to that, to the steps of that faith. And he's saying of our father Abraham, because you had Jews and Gentiles that read these these epistles and they believed in Yahweh Shai. They believed, you know, in the covenants. They believed, you know, that they they were returning, you know, to their to their God given covenant. And, and, you know, Paul is saying, you know, they're walking in them same steps. You have to be, Paul is essentially telling the Jews, you know, speaking to the Jews in this precept, you know, that that these these Gentiles are coming back. And he's using the similitude of Abraham and, the, and his faith before being circumcised, circumcised in his household. So what's, that's what um, verse 12 is talking about. Verse 13, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So again, you know, Paul is speaking to the Jews in this precept, you know, um, of course, he said in Romans 3 and 2 that the law is important. And Romans 3.31, we established the law. But he, what he's speaking to in this precept is to the Jews mainly who thought that they were justified through the actions of the law, you know, but they denied, you know, the things contained in the law, which is command, what the Most High commanded to re, for all Israel to return. So what Paul did, he went way back, he went, he went back, back before the law. And he used Abraham as an example because, you know, um, through Abraham, all these all these promises were given. And that commandment, you know, was given to circumcise the seed. And that was commanded to all the seed. So again, Paul, Paul is not, you know, he's not denying the law. He's not denying circumcision. He's 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 saying these Gentiles should be circumcised. Um, like he was, uh, saying in verse four, you know, but he was also establishing the fact that these promises were made through the whole, to the whole seed, not through the law, but through the promises that came through the faith, which came before anything else. So Paul is telling these Jews that these Gentiles, you know, their righteousness or justification, um, is through the faith and you know they, they of course have to keep the law you know but all these things you know 
they have to be guided, you know, in, in righteousness, in correctness, in uprightness. So let's move on to verse 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Because the heirs, you know, um, of course are the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But, you know, um, it wasn't just to those that were given the law. If you can understand what I'm saying, because before the law came, the promise was given to Isaac. So it wasn't through the law that all these things were established from the beginning. It was established through faith, through Abraham and his faith, then through his works. Then through his works, he was given the commandment, the commandment of circumcision. So Paul is using that same example. And that's not what Paul is establishing here is that the main the point is not through the law, but through faith in executing the law. So he's using the example of Abraham, his faith, then showing it through 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 his works, but he but just being justified through the faith first. Because Abraham was justified through that before anything else. And then he showed his works through his faith. Then he was given the commandment to circumcise. So the same similitude he's using for these Jews and Gentiles, you know, you got to have faith. This is why he spoke of the law of faith in the end of chapter 3. Because you have that faith that you're going to keep the law, and then you, you keep the law through your faith, through your works. So it says, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. So Paul is saying, you know, um, if it be of carnal works, then, then it's, it has nothing to do with faith then. You know, and that, you know, ultimately cancels what, what was promised to Abraham. But what he's saying is that it doesn't cancel any of that because it all started through faith. So he, he's, again, making two different, two comparisons. Abraham, his faith, and receiving circumcision, the commandment, and the Israelites believing, you know, them then executing the law and showing their, their, their works through their faith and that they're going to righteously keep, keep the precepts of the law. Verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where that no law is, there is no transgression. So, um, we have to look at the at the um at the wording for this for this verse, because verse fifteen, you know, um, if you look at the transliteration, tells you that the law, uh, brings abhorrence. Um. Um, basically, uh, Paul, Paul, he, he's, what he's saying, he's speaking to the Gentiles, you know, in this precept, in this verse, um, here in verse 15, um, he's basically, to the Gentiles, he's, he's telling them, look, what the law tells you is, 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 what to dislike and what to avoid. Things like adultery, homosexuality, incest. And where there is no law, there is no deviation. So what he's telling you, you know, um, that the law tells you what things to dislike, to abhor, to avoid, to abstain from. And if you, and if, and if you, um, so where there is no law, you know, there is no deviation. We're going to look at translation for these things. Because you can't just make a whole doctrine out of out of this this verse and say, well, you know, that doesn't say that in the law. So I'm not breaking. I'm not I'm not in transgression. Because when it comes down to it, the Ten Commandments, the other precepts go off the original Ten Commandments. So if it has to do with with one of the Ten Commandments, then you're break you're you're in sin. 
for example, you know, um, when it when when it says, you know, thou shalt not covet, you know, it's not going to tell you, you know, thou shalt not covet, you know, this, that, this, and that. It's not going to name every single thing, but it tells you, you know, um, what to what to avoid and what is what is going off what is sin for example you know if no law was made to avoid homosexuality then then that would be considered going off but it is so this verse says that the law merely tells you what to avoid and what you can't be justified in just knowing what to avoid because you know you know, you can't just say, well, it doesn't say exactly this, so, you know, this is lawful. But if it has to do with the first ten commandments, then you're you're still in sin. You may honor your, your mom and your mother and your father, but, you know, uh, in the precepts, in, in the law, it also says, you know, thou shalt honor the hoary head of, of the elder. So it still says, you know, you know, you have to respect your elders, not just your, your mother and your father. So all everything goes hand in hand. This is what Paul's speaking on here. This is what he's trying to get these Gentiles to 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 know. So let's look at the translation for that verse. Verse 15. Romans chapter Salakia in verse uh, 15 Romans chapter 4 and where there is um, no law there is no uh, transgression so if you look at the um, Greek which it's just parabesis it says a transgression overstepping a deviation violation so where there is basically like like I said you know um if there is no law for that you know there is no deviation from what you're commanded to keep but you know we know that the first ten commandments they touch on on the whole slew of things so it's not just one thing specifically but it tells you, um, that's why it says, where well, there's no law, there's no deviation. You have to translate it as that. Because that's what it's talking about. Um, and it says, because the law brings, brings wrath. But, you know, the Greek for that is organ. Origin. Like origin. You know, because the, again, this, Paul was writing this with a Hebraic, um, Israelite, you know, standpoint. You know, this is why, you know, shout out to GMS, you know, they, you know, I watched some of their videos and they say, you know, you have to look at etymologies. You have to, especially coming into this thing, you have to study the words. You know, so, um, so it says, um, because the law brings wrath, but you have to read it as, uh, abhorrence, you know, um, justifiable abhorrence, for example, like the, what I'm, the example I made about, you know, homosexuality, you know, so if no law was made to avoid homosexuality, then, that would be considered where there is no law, there is no deviation. But the law tells you what to abhor, what to um, what to justifiably avoid or dislike. And this is a right. This is how. This is a righteous thing. You're justified through the eyes of the Most High. So um. 
So that's that's what this verse is talking about. So if you read it as as it is translated, it will read, and where there is um salakia. Because the law brings um, abhorrence or justifiable abhorrence, and where there there is no law, there is no deviation. So you have to understand that that as that, and this is what Paul was trying to get these Israelite foreigners to understand. You know, he was saying essentially. Um, so you can't read everything as it is written. You have to look at the uh, transliterations and study the words. For if they which are of the law be heirs, Salakia, because the law worketh a justifiable abhorrence for where um, no law is, there is no deviation. So if you read it as that, you have a clearer understanding of what, of what Paul was trying to teach these people at the time, these Israelite foreigners. Because he's, he's teaching them, you know, even go going down to the first ten commandments, you know, the law, uh, um, the law teaches what's uh, what's um, what where you are justified and abhorring. You know, and if you look at the, um, and it doesn't even say worketh wrath. It says, it's like, yeah. it doesn't say worketh. It says, um, brings, so you can't say, um, that, that what I'm saying is incorrect because it makes more sense if you say, um, see, it doesn't say, it says brings or Kator Gazetai to 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 work accomplish uh um to work fully or bring. So if you read it like that it says because the law bringeth justifiable abhorrence for where no law is there is no deviation. So it just tells you what's justified, what you're justifying and disliking. You know, and when there's no law, there is no um, there is there's no there's no deviation. You know, and it has to be understood as that. So it's telling you what is what is you know wrong, what to avoid. Even as far as, you know, um, but the, you know, the, the Jews at that time, you know, they thought that, you know, it was all had to do with, you know, ceremonial cleansing and all that. That's important, but you, you know, Paul is saying, you know, what's important is to know what to avoid, what to abhor, what to dislike when you, when you go off. And where, where, where it doesn't tell you that you're going off, there is there is no, it doesn't speak, it doesn't tell you about devi, um, what's, what is deviation. Deviation is something like, I deviate from going to the right path. So the law brings abhorrence, for where there, there no law, where no law is, there is no deviation, there is no getting off the path off the correct path because why you know the law is 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 what justifies you if kept the right way so um that's what it's talking about so you can't just you can't just say well you know it doesn't say this exactly in the law you know, um, and that's that, then I'm not breaking the law if it doesn't say I can't do that. Well, it doesn't say many things, but it tells you what to, what to avoid and what to abhor or dislike. That's what it's talking about. 
And like I said, the first Ten Commandments, they touch on a lot of things. A, a what? Uh, it touches a, um, it's basically the first Ten Commandments cast a wide net, basically is, is, is a better way to say it. So let's move on. Verse 16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So Paul was telling these Jews and these Gentiles, Abraham is the father of all of us. And we're not, um, you know, the faith came first through Abraham, which was throughout time, you know, given to the seed following him, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not through the law, but through the faith that he had to do what was commanded of the Most High for him to receive the promises and the, and the commandment of circumcision. So it's the same example that Paul is using and comparing that to these Israelite foreigners coming into the fold and them having that faith and then through their faith, having faith that they will keep the law um, righteously or in a justified manner. Like I said in verse 15, so they know what to um, what to abhor and know that um, because the law, you know, where there is no law, you know, it doesn't, there is no deviation, you know, so when, when you don't, when you don't have a law that, the, that tells you, you know, thou shall not do this, or thou shall do this, it, either way, it doesn't tell you, um, it tells you what, what not to, what, what to avoid. So there's no law touching on that, then then it's the law is not going to tell you to deviate. It's not going to tell you, you know, um, to that you're that you're deviating from doing the right thing or you're you're going off the the right path. And in verse 16, Paul is saying this was um, written from the beginning through faith that all these things would happen. Not through the law, but through the promises to the whole, to the seed that would come after all these things had happened. Abraham having faith through his faith, you know, sojourning in a strange land, you know, um, raising up his seed, doing what the Most High commanded, nearly offering his his only begotten Son, which is a pattern of Yahweh Shai. You know, if you look at it deeper, is a pattern of Yahweh Shai being, um. Offered as a living sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Why? Because Abraham, he faithfully did that. He almost, you know, sacrificed his only son, his only heir. Why? Because he had that faith. He believed. So this is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about, um, you know, some camps might say, you know, he's talking about Abraham and through the and the whole all the nations that came out of Abraham, that's not what it's talking about. Because this is Paul speaking on Abraham. He, you know, he can't speak for Abraham, but he can make examples out of the things that were written. And that's all Paul is doing is making an example and comparing it to these Gentiles coming back into the fold with that faith and them having the faith to keep the law. So this is mainly he's writing this precept, this verse to, 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 to the Jews so they can understand when they're read, when they're reading that these are of the same people. These are Israelites. They're Israelite foreigners. They're Gentiles. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead. And call it those things which be not as though they were. So, um, you know, um,
So all these things had to had a had to come into place. The Israelites can be scattered, you know. Um, you know, the father of many nations, you know. Um, you know, because Abraham did become a father of many nations. You know, the Israelites, you know, they're 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 many nations right now. So called black, Hispanic, Native Americans. Why? Not only because they're in many nations, but they are in, in, in whole in whole um countries. Not as a whole, but you know, you know, but but he he is the father of many nations because the like it says in, in the beginning of Exodus, you know, they multiplied and, and they covered the land, the Israelites. And and that this was Paul speaking to the Jews, saying that these the most high he quickened these Gentiles with that faith, and he and call it those things which be not as though they were. You know, and him saying that, you know, is basically, you know, speaking on on the pattern of of how of how these things came into play throughout history. Throughout the history of the chosen seed, all the way from the beginning. Like I said, you know, because Abraham, he offered his only son. And, and you know, and all these things were, um, you know, the Jews didn't understand this. But Paul was pointing out these things. This is why he said, call it those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. So, you know, like it says in verse 18, against hope, he believed. He believed he had that hope that he might become the father of, of many nations, uh, like, like the Most High commanded him, like the Most High promised him. Because why? Um, let's see if I can go into the account. Right here. So like it is, bear with me. Just going to try to find this real quick. I believe it's um because um because even you know when Sarah you know um when before she had Isaac, you know, um, they told Sarah, you know, you know, thou shalt be a mother of many nations, you know. So, you know, some camps may say, some camps say, well, this is this is talking about, you know, all the nations that came from Abraham, you know, but this is actually talking about, you know. This is Paul using an example, you know, and he's talking about the Israelites. You know, he's not talking about, um, why would he talk about in an epistle to Jews and Gentiles about, you know, nations that, that didn't pertain to the subject matter? So like, yeah, let me see. I think it's uh chapter eighteen. Slack so is just bear with me. All 
All right, so Salak, yeah, got the precept right here. So, um, you know, like I said in verse 17, you know, um, and the most high been quickened, quickened Abraham, you know, cause he, he, his son, his son that he was going to offer up, you know, he was almost, you know, basically, you know, old and Sarah was old in age, you know, um, you know, those things which were not, you know, um, and, you know, when Israel started off, you know, they were, they were of, of a little number, but then they became as, as a multitude, you know, like, like they blessed, um, like the way Rebecca was blessed, um, See if I got it right here. I think it's twenty-four. So you know, these were these were things that were, you know, seemed like that they were coming to nothing, but God turned that and he quickened, you know, even Abraham and, and the Israelites, a mighty nation came out of out of him. You know, and this was one of the um last nations to be established but you know all things were our pattern of things to come like i wish i said you know those who will be who are last will be first you know and he was you know that was that scripture is many full but you know um his book of genesis chapter 24 verse 60 and let they they bless rebecca and said unto her thou art our sister be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Um, so, you know, this is what Paul is uh, speaking about. You know, he turned something that out of nothing, you know, and rightfully so, you know, because Abraham was, he was a faithful man. You know, he kept the commandments. He did what was commanded of him. You know, and this is the point that Paul was trying to make, that he had that faith. You know, he had faith to, to execute, you know, what, what he was supposed to do. So, let me just get this uh, preset right here. It's Book of Genesis, uh, chapter 22. And verse um, book of Genesis chapter 22 and verse 15 and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself have I sworn saith the Lord for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son thine only son so, you know, that was a pattern of, of, of the things that were, were to come, you know. That was that was Abraham's only begotten son. And he 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 was willing to sacrifice him. You know, not just for himself, but through faith, you know, that that those after him would be blessed, that many nations would come out of him, that he would receive the land of um of his inheritance. Even though he didn't receive it, he still he still he still kept going as if as if he was close to that to that um to receiving those things. Mind you, you know, Israel after they came out of Egypt, then the the land was was given by Lot, was divided by Lot through Joshua. But you know, this is why you know um. This is Paul. What Paul is, is speaking on, you know, um, as far as you know, verse eighteen. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that what was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And verse seventeen, you know, um, the Most High quickeneth him, you know, you know, and Paul was making the similitude of 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 
Abraham being quickened, you know, from not having an heir to having an heir, you know, which to eventually being his son, Isaac, you know, and he had him when he was um, old, you know. So he quickeneth the dead, you know, for um, for Abraham, and call those things which be not as though they were, you know. So he was just a single man, but you know, Paul is making the point that you know Abraham having that faith, you know, was quickened by the Most High, just like these Gentiles are coming back into the fold, you know, and you know these men that the Jews called on godly men, you know. Um, call those things which be not as though they were, you know, this, this precept, this verse was mainly to the Jews who, who did, who, who didn't understand that these were their, these were their people also, but they despised them, you know, so this is what Paul is talking about, you know, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that, what was spoken. So the point here. You know, is that Abraham, he believed what was spoken to him through the Most High. And Paul here is making supplication to the Jews, saying, you know, Abraham believed the things the Most High spoke to him. So how could you deny, you know, returning the return of these, these Israelite foreigners? Then you're denying, you know, what Abraham th believed. You know, so he's making two comparisons, you know, verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So the point Paul is making here is that, you know, Abraham didn't doubt. He, he was strong in that faith. And. Paul is mainly writing this verse to the Jews as an example to these Israelite foreigners, these Gentiles coming back into the fold, that they had that same steadfastness. They believed they had that faith. They just needed to be guided, just like some of these Jews who didn't, who didn't understand from the beginning, you know, how strong that faith was and how strong it has to be in order, you know, um, um, to be to in order for the most high to establish you verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief so again you know this goes with verse 19 you know he didn't doubt you know um and he didn't have any unbelief but he was um strong in the faith giving glory to the most high you know and this is what these Israelite uh, you know, these Gentiles were doing. And Paul wrote this 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 verse. So the Jews, when they read it, they understood, you know, um, that Paul was make making a comparison about these these Gentiles coming back into the fold. And they they were they were filled with faith after they heard the gospel, after they heard, you know, that Yahweh Shai, you know, came for the lost sheep, all Israel will be saved, that there is a kingdom. You know, being established, many mansions, you know, this quickened, you know, these Israelite foreigners, these, you know, what these Jews called ungodly men. So these are the, these are comparisons that Paul is making towards the end of this chapter. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You know, because... Paul is writing to the Jews here that these Gentiles, they same way Abraham was persuaded that the Most High performed what he said to Abraham is the same thing that these Israelite Gentiles believed what was in the gospel, believed what was um, um, the the, uh, the the gospel that was that was preached to them, that was ordained through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, because you know. That first mediator, you know, that was appointed was Moses. And then, you know, the prophets. But then when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, 
He was that prophet from, from Deuteronomy 18. That, that, you know, they had to believe these things. And these things were, were, were meant to happen, just like the pattern of, of things to come. You know, um, Abraham, you know, offering his only son. This is why, you know, Paul wrote of Abraham, because it has many, many um, similitudes, you know, um, as far as, you know, what happened in the times of Yahweh Shai and on down. You know, in future prophecy. So let's um go to the next preset. Verse 20, um, 22. Therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. You know, again, you know, Paul is 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 um establishing the fact that, you know, the belief came first and then you know justified through that and then you know through the works verse 23 now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him so it wasn't written just for him to know at the time but you know it was written for that faith through the chosen seed from the even from the beginning you know um since the very, you know, uh, uh, beginning of the oracles, you know, so he wasn't given that faith, you know, he didn't offer his only begotten son, you know, just, just for, because of that for him, he didn't have a, a, a son with, with a, um, with the Egyptian for nothing. Why? Because all these things were a pattern of things to come. So all these things weren't just, he wasn't just given that faith just so he can have it. It was so his seed after him would be given that same faith. And this is what Paul was, was making these, trying to make these Jews understand about these Gentiles. So verse 23, let me read it again. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Yahweh Shai, our Lord, from the dead. So when he says us, he's talking to these Gentiles and these Jews. Because they're all of the same nation. That they should believe on Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Again, why? Because he came as a living sacrifice. Just like Abraham offered his only begotten son. Just like it says in the prophets. Blesses, um, um, actually let me get that preset real quick. But the point is, you know, you know, Paul was reconciling these, these two groups together. Verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Justification and what? Redemption of sin. Because after Yahweh Shai was delivered up, you know, after he prophesied the destruction, the coming destruction of Jerusalem, the temple, the dispersion of the Israelites into all nations, no longer them being able to keep an animal sacrifice. You see, you have to be spiritual to 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 um, understand these things and know that with the Most High, all things are possible. So again, Yahweh Shai was delivered up. For as a living sacrifice, just like the pattern of Isaac and his only begotten of Abraham and his only and his only son, Isaac, he almost offered him up. You know, um, justified, you know, through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, you know, as a as a uh, living sacrifice, because again, you know. According to even the, even Deuteronomy, you know, the Israelites should be dispersed in all nations. You wouldn't have a temple to do sacrifice. So the Most High would have to send, you know, a living sacrifice for the time to come. See, all these things are, are written in a pattern. You know, and Paul is what this is what he's trying to establish these Jews and these Gentiles to understand together to reconcile them. That was part of his ministry. 
So let me get that um, precept in Isaiah, and I'll go ahead and close out. Book of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. You know, so again, you know, this is a similitude of, um, of, um, Sarah and Hagar, the um, Abraham's concubine. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Um, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be an inhabited. Um, Um, let me see. Let's go to, uh, uh, Isaiah 54 and 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. So um so the point here is, you know, he's he's a, the redeemer of, of the nation of Israel. And we're gonna get the context in verse seven. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused. Saith thy God, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Um, so again, you know, this talk about the nation of Israel, Jews and Gentiles, and these are the precepts that these Jews knew. You know, so... Um, This is why in, in this chapter, you know, Roman, Romans chapter 4, you know, Paul was uh, attempting to establish that these things came, these things came from the beginning. You know, and, and these, these Jews, you know, who despised their own people, they, they neglected these type of things that were spoken of in gathering together. You know, the dispersed, the grieving spirit, the forsaken nation, those who went off but have been called back, you know, in the, in the last days. So, um, there's Yatazadak, Hero Israel. Again, give on all, all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, and say Shalom.